Hello, hello, hello. It's a good morning to everybody across the African continent and beyond. It's week six, believe it or not, of the Women Empowerment Program. And we are so excited to be graduating today. So before we get the show on the road, please find the interpretation button that is to the bottom right of your screen so that you can hear this session in the language of your choice. So you can have an option to hear this program in either French or English. Please make sure to, to select either one. So here we go. It's been a six week journey of lots of leadership, lots of learning, lots of inspiration, and above all, a whole lot of creativity. So we are celebrating this graduation against the backdrop that it is the fifth year of the Women Empowerment Program. Can you believe it? It's been five years that we've been able to enjoy loads and loads of inspiration and motivation through this program. But before we kick off, how is everybody feeling today? You know how we do things on this program. We want to do a quick check-in. So thumbs up if you're feeling as good as I am. Thumbs up. Lots of love if you're feeling lots of love. So, so excited. So many beautiful faces on the screen. We're feeling good. We're feeling great. We're feeling excited as you should. And it's a warm, warm welcome back to all those from the WEP alumni, we are so excited to have our friends back today. We're so pleased to see you all to our special guests on the show today. Thank you so, so much for taking the time out to grace us today. So what's been happening at the Women Empowerment Program? I'm sure we all want to know how it went last week. So as always, our session started off with the lovely voice, the melodious voice of our very own Farah L, our resident Libyan Irish songstress here on the Women Empowerment Program. Still high off the energy from last week's presentations, we heard from all of the groups and it was mind blowing as we saw firsthand the hard work and effort that has been put into the presentations from all the groups. But guess what? Today we get to see the final finished polished presentations which have been a buildup of the work done by our previous web participants in the previous cohorts of semester two 2022 and semester one 2023. So as a refresher for everybody the main objective is to put together a framework for girls health and education that is going to leverage technology and ethics. So as this Women Empowerment Semester comes to a close, we were so happy to celebrate the fifth year of, the, of this particular program by having Linda take us through the research for WEP and what to expect as we prepare for 2024. And guess what? We cannot wait. So we always look forward to our weekly dose of wellness to help us unwind after our very fast paced sessions. This has become one of the signature uh, sections of our program. And this is what we enjoyed again with Linda. And we look forward to our session with Nadine this week. So, so much has been said and it looks like a whole lot happened last week. So let's get the show on the road and to get us started today, our lovely Farah Al will be setting the tone for our graduation session. And Farah, thank you so much for your continued support and incredibly beautiful music over the last five weeks. Farah, what have you got today? Thank you, Vicky. I'm so excited to be here and I can't believe it's been six weeks already. Uh, what have I got for you today? While you were chatting there and kind of recapping over the past few weeks, I decided I would write down some things that stuck out to me and then I was like I'm gonna sing that so <laughs> here we go just straight out of my heart and we'll see how it goes um have an amazing session and thank you for having me these past six weeks it's been a pleasure congratulations to all the 
women here uncompleted the workshop congratulations to every single woman on the women's empowerment workshops from all over the motherland africa and beyond learning from each other growing together for all our communities thank you really thank you to vicky linda and nadine alexandra and the whole team because <laughs> you are all loved and you are all peace you are all needed you are all loved. You make the world a better place. Beside, 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 with peace, with love, with joy, congratulations, thank you, I'll see you again, I look forward to it, my friend. <laughs> there you go <laughs> little um, impromptu songwriting from me <laughs> oh my god and, and we love it and we love it we love it we're so here for it thank you so so much for saying thank congratulations you. much deserved congratulations actually to all the women that are in this cohort and as you know ladies there's lots of love all round at the women empowerment program so let's show Farah some love before she leaves and Farah has been such an important part of our program and definitely we're looking forward to seeing you again Farah you too lots, so of, lots love. of love bye bye so very exciting way to set the tone and start the program for today and so looking at our group presentation because I feel like this is the most important part of the graduation. It's basically the culmination of all the hard work that the ladies have put across for the last six weeks. Even more exciting is that our fireside panelists are also with us already and they will be able to give feedback on each presentation that they hear. So just to provide a little bit of background to everyone joining us on the call today, the Women Empowerment Program participants were put into five groups to continue to develop the work covered in previous semesters on girls, health, and education. This is one of the most important parts of the Women Empowerment Program as we focus on UN SDGs, three, four, five, and 17. So today, as we celebrate their graduation program, they will be presenting to us their contributions, their ideas on how to solve the challenges presented in their different modules. As I've said, they have built on the work done in semester two of this program in 2022 and semester one of this program in 2023. So we're in semester two of 2023. And this is just to provide a little bit of context of how much work they've had to do to actually transform the work that has been done in previous cohorts. So we're particularly looking forward to advancing further the work of this cohort into a final document for a framework which we look forward to sharing with all of you. So by way of recap, 
the following are the themes being covered for the module by the web participants. So they would be looking at these areas, sexual reproductive health. So we want to be on the lookout for that. They will be looking at inclusive education and special needs. And finally, community-based health. So each of the presentations is going to take this format and I'd love for all the ladies that are in the five groups, uh, whoever is going to be um, working uh, with us on that one to just be ready. And each of the presentations will now be presented to us in the form of a four minute video. And we are going to start with a group one. So group one go by the name Diamond Divas. We are the Diamond Divas and our project is on managing plastic waste in our schools and communities. Plastic pollution is adversely affecting ecosystems, marine life, biodiversity and human health, particularly women. The production of plastics and the disposal contributes to greenhouse gas emissions and exacerbating the problem of climate change. Many African countries lack adequate infrastructure for proper plastic waste collection, recycling and disposal, leading to widespread betraying and open dumping of plastics. Improper plastic waste management in Africa exposes communities to health hazards, as it often leads to the breeding of disease vectors and water contamination, with microplastics infiltrating food chains and posing potential risks to human health, and these effects can disproportionately affect women and girls. Our project's objective are to sensitize women and girls on the impacts of plastics on their livelihoods and reproductive health, encourage individuals to segregate plastic waste from other types of waste by making it convenient through the use of sensor bins, and mitigate the adverse effects of plastic waste on biodiversity, natural habitats, and public health, particularly women reproductive health. A field of study is a multifaceted SDG approach that cuts across several SDGs, including SDG 3, 4, 6, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Plastics contain chemicals such as PBAs, which are known endocrine disruptors. Exposure of these chemicals can affect hormonal balance and may contribute to reproductive health issues in women and girls. Some components of plastics, such as polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, are known carcinogens. Prolonged exposure of these substances through plastic pollution may increase the risk of cancer, including breast cancer. Endocrine disrupting chemicals impact fertility and reproductive health, leading to challenges in conceiving or maintaining a healthy pregnancy and developmental issues in unborn children affecting both physical and cognitive development. In many developing countries, women are often responsible for water and other resource management. Plastic pollution can impact water sources, affecting the livelihoods of women who rely on these resources for their daily needs. It is therefore important to say no to excessive use of plastics, particularly single-use plastics, given its impacts on public health and women's health. A solution to this menace is the Plastic Smart Bin. The Plastic Smart Bin is a convenient and hygienic waste segregation approach that makes use of automatic sensors to detect and accept plastics only. It seeks to communicate with the central waste management system through the use of Wi-Fi or IoT connection for remote monitoring and automated alerts. The Plastic Smart Bin uses infrared sensor to detect the plastic using a camera trained with machine learning. The bin is programmed to open for only plastic waste. Ultrasonic sensor detects waste level in the bin. Subsequently, when the bin is full, it communicates with the central waste management system for collection. In achieving our goals, we intend to partner with government agencies, NGOs, and other manufacturing companies that produce plastic bins. We also seek to sensitize the public on the use of these new products and also create awareness on social media. Again, we seek to integrate plastic waste management modules into school curriculum. Our expected outcome are one, take action to protect the environment and female reproductive health. Two, more efficient use of resources. Three, Promote recycling by encouraging responsible behavior. Four, promote sustainable waste management practices and create a greener future. Five, positive increase in household plastic waste collection. And finally, reduce carbon footprints. Meet our team. Vicky from Ghana, Annabella from Mozambique, Miriam from Malawi, Rebecca from Ghana, Sandra from Nigeria, Maggie from Kenya, 
Joyce from Nigeria, Dockers from Ghana, Yasmin from South Africa, Fina from Rwanda, Claudette from Rwanda, and Vida from Ghana. Thank you. And thank you to Group One, the Diamond Divas. Let's show them lots and lots of love by giving them some, using our reaction buttons, let's clap, let's show them some love. What a brilliant presentation. Who would have thought about how the climate affects reproductive health? What an amazing uh, angle there on that presentation. So thank you so much to Group One and congratulations for all the hard work that you've put in uh, in the last five weeks. So moving swiftly along, we are going to move over to group three and they go by the team name STEM Queens. Hello, it was a short, fruitful and inspiring journey in Women's Empowering Workshop 2023. We've been introduced to wonderful ladies with great stories, inspiring and leaving great impact on their communities. And here we come to the end of the journey, our final project. This is the final project of group number three, the STEAM Queens. But before getting into the project, let's meet the STEAM Queens. Mary from Cameroon, Leila from Morocco, Sarah from Ghana, Virginia from Kenya, Teresa from Nigeria, Abena and Evelyn from Ghana, and Agnes. The STEAM Queens have been assigned to work on unplanned pregnancy, a topic that goes hand in hand with the girl's well-being. We have agreed to use design thinking techniques to study and find out solutions to this problem. We talk about unplanned pregnancy. When the pregnancy occurs at a time, no children or more children are desired in the couple. Also, when it occurs earlier than the couple has already planned. So, unplanned pregnancy is unintended, unwanted, or mistimed. Our project has two main goals. The first goal was methodological, that is, to define, understand design thinking, and apply it in our project. The second one is to design a prototype which will best meet our needs and which will help to raise awareness among our students about the, this subject. We went on applying design thinking process on our project. The first step, emphasizing. In this condition of unwanted pregnancy, the girl is lost, overwhelmed, frustrated because of ignorance. We defined the unplanned pregnancy as being a barrier to the girl's education. By the end of the process, we decided to design a set of guidelines to help avoid unplanned pregnancy among our girls using Scratch app. And finally, to take this Scratch tool into our classrooms to check its effectiveness. Planned pregnancy has many causes, among them early marriage, low education level, lack or no sexual education, poverty, relationship situ, or non-consensual sexual acts. And because it is either mistimed or unwanted, unplanned pregnancy has many negative consequences, either on the girl, the baby, or even their families. That is the stone corner of the nation. It's only by educating our girls that we can help them make the right decisions concerning their sexual and by educating them on how they can prevent and plan pregnancy. The following are areas in which education can help to reduce unplanned pregnancy among individuals. To conclude, education can help in solving this issue by making well-informed and responsible decision makers individuals. On the other hand, education can work on reducing the social stigma concerning unplanned pregnancy.
Oh, very exciting. Thank you so much to the STEM queens once again. That was absolutely amazing. And the whole aim of these presentations is to integrate some form of technology into them. And we've seen that with Group 3's presentation. So congratulations again to Group 3. Lots of love from us to you at the Women Empowerment Program. So let's take a moment to show them a little bit of love and appreciation for all the hard work they've put in. So we're off to a really great start with the presentations and I can't wait to see what Group 4 Bold Women has in store for us. African women, we are bold women and we are group four. Our design thinking challenge was on inclusive education, specific on special needs, health education, and others. Learners with hearing disabilities is what we looked at. The title is how to include African girls living with hearing disabilities in the mainstream schools. The problem statement is African girls with hearing disabilities feel discriminated when they are taught at special schools. They want to be included in the mainstream schools. We focused on SDG 3, which is good health and well being. So, how do we meet our special learners' needs? So as a team, we decided we can include organizations, communities, and parents to assist in buying hearing aids and devices such as cell phones for these learners to use in their classrooms. Schools can use AI software programs and technologies, for example, using a, safety, a software called OTA.AI. So our technology solution is otter.ai. What is otter.ai? It is a speech-to-text application that uses artificial intelligence to convert spoken words into written. It employs automatic speech recognition to analyze audio recordings and generate transcriptions. It has some advantages and disadvantages. So some of the advantages are that this software can be used for live classes. Students can save their work in a folder. Users can edit and highlight important sections within the transcriptions for better organization. The disadvantages are that the learner and teacher should have access to internet. Otherwise, there won't be any lesson taking place. It will write words according to someone's pronunciation. So if a word is pronounced badly, there is a likelihood of poor communication. So at the bottom here, we have uh, attached or we have included a link that someone can always use just to go on YouTube and learn more about how otter.ai works. Thank you so much for listening to us, Group 4. We are bold women. Bold women indeed. That was absolutely amazing. And it's mind blowing to me how quickly we have adopted AI into our education as the Women Empowerment Program. And this is what we love to see. So congratulations to Bold Women Group 4. Again, lots of love from us to you for that amazing work that you have put through in the last five weeks. So the, the, the train keeps on moving. The train keeps on moving. This is absolutely exciting. In fact, I don't think I want this to stop. So let's move on to group five. We've got Aicha Chena. Hello and good morning to all the wonderful teachers out there. It's me, Ilham Shupari from group five group. Aisha Chena, I'm a technology teacher in Morocco, Rabat, and today, I'm going to show you the work that my team and I have done. We choose to talk about one of the mental health issues, which is depression in children and adolescents. 
and I'm pretty sure that you are wondering why we choose Aisha Shina as the name of our group and why we put her picture in our logo. So basically because she's one of the most iconic Moroccan women, she's a social worker, women's rights advocate and activist, and she also founded the Association of Solidarité Féminine in 1985 who opened its doors to unmarried mothers, offering them shelter and varied form of assistance. In the first place, we're going to talk about the causes, then the consequences, and finally, we're going to show you examples of solutions that we have done. One of the causes is the abusive environment. The child finds himself torn, angry, and lonely. Also, divorce and family breakdown, bullying or cyberbullying, and hormonal changes, especially with girls. Depression can affect adolescents in multiple ways. At the academic level, they find it difficult to focus and do their best, and sometimes they may skip classes just to avoid stress. Social isolation marks their life in their small and large community, as they rarely take part in social activities. Their behavior become risky. They may harm themselves and others as well, as they experience anger, despair, and even suicidal thoughts. They may have health issues, changes in mood and appetite, and also sleep disorder. Now, the question is, what can we do as teachers to support our students? First of all, we should find out what's happening by creating listening and support cells that contains teachers, social supporters, and why not psychiatrists as well, by also observing and paying attention to their behavior. We should also let them express themselves. Let them talk to you and listen carefully to what they are saying about how they are feeling. And please try not to judge. Encourage students to participate in extracurricular activities. You can see some examples that we have done in the next slides. The first example is this drawing activity. We can support our students by searching for collaborations with associations in order to provide and refer serious cases to a psychiatrist and teach them how to protect themselves from cyberbullying and bullying, which you can see in the examples below. Here's another example of the safe use of Internet Day, which can be a very good opportunity to teach students how to protect themselves from cyberbullying. Another activity, and as you can see, it was only for girls, and we teach them how to deal with online sexual harassment. And as another solution, we created a Facebook page to spread the awareness about this topic. And we're going to end this presentation by a Brigham Young quote. You educate a man, you educate a man, you educate a woman, you educate a generation. This work was realized by Asiya Zuhair, Hanan Nab, Hasna Yassin, Hind Tashawi, Mi Ilham Jabari, and Khadija Munir. Thank you so much for listening, and I really hope that you enjoyed. Indeed, we did enjoy. Thank you so much to Group 5 again. Absolutely amazing work that you have done over the last five weeks. And I particularly enjoyed your use of social media, which is so, so easy for a lot of the young girls to get a hold of and to jump onto those platforms. So well done for levering, leveraging that. And you are right. You educate a woman, you educate a nation. And this is part of the community that girl, uh, that women in part that the women empowerment program has formed here. So we're really, really excited about that. And just to remind everybody again, to enjoy this program in the language of your choice. Please 
click on the bottom right hand side of your screen, the interpretation channel and select whether you would like to hear this program in English and French. So moving swiftly along to our last presentation for the session, group six, Les Daisies, and let's hear what they have in store for us. Prévu pour nous. Unfortunately, we have no sound for this video. We need to restart the video and have the sound. We need to stop the video and share it with sound, please. Bonjour à tous. Je suis ravie de vous présenter. Hello everyone. I am delighted to introduce the work of our group within the Women Empowerment Program. The Daisies, that's the name of our working group made up of 15 dedicated women in the field of education coming from three different countries, Morocco, Cameroon and Madagascar. Together, we worked passionately to propose solutions to the taboo of sexuality in African families. Let's start with the situation. Traditional standards often impose silence on sexuality. Economic conditions of families often influence decisions about early marriage. There is a lack of awareness and of communication at home between parents and children, as well as in schools. The result is harassment and abuse, early school leaving, stress, anxiety, poor hygiene, unplanned pregnancies, and the transmission of sexually transmitted infections. We want to break this cycle, never again. We conducted a survey among young African boys and girls to better understand their opinions on the taboo around sexuality. The results are clear. Discussing sexuality within the family is a taboo subject. Young people are reluctant to ask questions and they express the need for support and awareness raising. They show a marked preference for a digital approach rather than a hands-on approach. It is essential to offer sex education tailored to the needs of young people by combining on-the-ground approaches at school level with digital solutions designed to reach a wider audience. Here are our solutions, setting up health clubs in schools. And we also offer awareness raising posters. Explore Les Daisy's Facebook page to dive into engaging posts and inspiring videos. This dynamic platform is where our community shares stories, solutions, and awareness raising moments. Enter the world of Daisy Space, our online hub on notions integrated with Africa Code Week.
Here, on this simple and collaborative platform, we make it easy for teachers to contribute from anywhere without the need for technical skills. Our choice of open source tools such as Notions reflects our commitment to making education accessible to all. On LinkedIn, the group Lay Daisies for Educators is growing. Look for us to discover a space where education professionals can connect, exchange ideas and get inspired. LinkedIn is a strategic choice to broaden our horizons and strengthen education in Africa. End your journey with our YouTube channel, Lay Daisies. Subscribe to access educational videos, powerful testimonials, and inspiring content. YouTube is our visual platform, it amplifies our voice and extends our impact. Discover the meaning of our initiative at the heart of the Women Empowerment Program. As Daisies, our commitment to breaking the taboo of sexuality in Africa is expressed through strategic technological choices. Follow us into a world where carefully selected tools become vehicles for open and inclusive dialogue. Scan the QR code to explore each platform. And there we have it. That was our final group, Led Daisy. And look at the use of technology, I am blown away. We've got QR codes, we've got a LinkedIn page, we've got a Facebook page. We even have a space that's integrated with our very own Africa Code Week. I mean, if this is not amazing, I don't know what is. So congratulations to Group 6, Lair Daisies. Lots of love from us to you for that amazing resource that you have been able to to share with us. And I think if you can, can we have all the groups uh, just, you know, if, you, if your network permits, just if you can just put on your videos so that we can see all these amazing faces that have made up all these amazing resources over the last six weeks. Have a look at the faces of greatness, ladies, and the very few gentlemen that might be hiding behind the scenes. Thank you so, so much to all of you. And we appreciate all the hard work that you have put in. And again, lots of love to each and every one of you. So as you pat yourselves on the back, I'm going to ask Nadine, to join me as we introduce the next part of our program, which is an extension of these lovely presentations that we've just witnessed on the screen today. Nadine, good morning. Morning, Vicky, and good morning to everybody. And uh, can I say just what a, a pleasure it is to be here in the celebration and to see all of the incredible work. And just like you, I am blown away by these presentations. Ladies, how is it possible to do all of that in such a short time across countries with network challenges, with lives, busy lives? It's it's really absolutely incredible. So um, congratulations to everybody. So I'm absolutely delighted to um, be introduced the fireside where we get to speak to wonderful experts and supporters of the women's empowerment program um, and hear what they think about this incredible uh, these incredible presentations so the panelists that are going to join me today we have four amazing women. Um, we have first up um, Ilham Laziz, uh, Madame Laziz, no, no stranger to this women's empowerment program. Um, Madame Laziz is the director of the Genie program at the Ministry of National Education of the Kingdom of Morocco. And, you know, one thing I want to say, she has not just one PhD, but two PhDs. And as somebody who's who's studying one PhD at the moment, Madame Laziz, you're going to have to tell us how on God's earth you managed to have two PhDs, one in applied science and one in materials chemistry. You are so welcome back again, Madame Laziz. Welcome, welcome. Madame Laziz is joined by Claire Gilson and Duval 
also no stranger, a huge supporter uh, to this uh, to this program. Um, Claire is the director of the EMEA Corporate Social Responsibility and Africa Code Week Global Lead at SAP. She's also the founder of the Global Lead of, of the SAP uh, Africa Code Week program. She's also a Davos award winning, uh, you know, award winner for the initiative of Africa Code Week um, and has huge extensive experience all over Africa. Welcome back, Claire. Wonderful to see you for the continuity. Fantastic. Welcome, welcome. Uh, also joined by um, our two two wonderful ladies is um, Nessa McManeliff. Uh, she is from Learnovate. Um, Nessa McManeliff is the Centre Director at Learnovate at Enterprise, Enterprise Ireland at IDA. Um, and she that is a funded technology research centre hosted in Trinity College Dublin. Um, and Nessa has over 25 years experience. And Nessa, delighted to see you. We saw you in person recently at Learnovate when Vicky was over in Ireland. So delighted to see you on the screen. Um, wonderful. And then, guys, um, I just I can't see the description for uh, for our fourth panelist there. It was there, but it seems to have disappeared. And I'd really like to be able to uh, to introduce her well. Uh, so maybe so let me just it, jump in there. Let me thanks, just jump Vicky. in there, my dear Nadine. Uh, so our fourth panelist uh, won't be joining us today. She sends her apologies, but let's keep the show going. Super. Okay, so women, I mean, let's come over to you and find out um, what have you, uh, you know, what what you've seen these presentations. You have to put the context here that these women have been together for six weeks, six weeks for two and a half hours two and a half hours every week. And then some of them have been working really hard be, uh, behind the scenes for sure. So, you know, in, in what you've seen in the five uh, presentations, how do they relate to your experience? Um, and, you know, what, what kind of feedback do you have and what's needed to improve girls' health and well-being? Um, so over to you, maybe I'll start with you, Madame Leziz, Le Le over to yourself. Your thoughts, oui, please. Bonjour à toutes et félicitations aussi, groupe. Hello, everyone, and congratulations to everyone because the three themes were totally integrated in the presentations. Uh, and yet on different topics, we had uh, community-based health, we had sexual and reproductive health and inclusive educations. And in only six weeks and two hours, roughly, they've learned how to interact and learn together and the program is about collaboration and being completing other people's works and i've been absolutely impressed by uh, the way people have integrated together i've also been very impressed by the group we mentioned aisha shena who uh, is a woman who advocated very strongly for women's rights and the, the, the groups have been absolutely inspirational for us this morning. Um, you spoke about uh, my, my education, and even though I have two PhDs, which I completed a long time ago, 30 years ago, every day I work with teachers and um I keep learning. I keep learning about the teaching and the learning methodology used every day in class. So congratulations all. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Madam Ladies. Um, Claire, how about you? I mean, again, you have um, history with the program. You've been here at the inception. You're 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 a big reason why this program is 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 able to run. Um, and and you like like myself and others have seen the progression over time. Um, what's your feedback as you see the five groups today, and how does it relate to your experience? And and yeah, just over to you, Claire. Hello, everyone, and thank you, a big thank you for inviting me to this program, to this web. The web is an incredible journey in terms of sharing teachers, uh, sharing in Africa. And I know it's the fifth anniversary of the program, uh, Farah El when she started mention that it's already five years. It's amazing. And that's what I share with her as well, this feeling, because the 
the web was launched in 2019 uh, along with Africa Code Week in Raba. And uh, we were very warmly welcomed by Madame Laziz. So I, I still remember it. And I think it's like yesterday only. So I would like to thank all of you very, very sincerely as a team. And I would like to mention someone we don't really often, and that is Bernard Kirk. Um, I was mentioned as a founding member of Africa Code Week, but I'm a co-founder. I'm not the main founder. And that's something I share with Bernard, who is also a co-founder. So I would like to thank him very sincerely because he has known how to turn the web into what it is today. And today, the web is a beautiful program. At the start, we had an in-person program with Bernard and Madame Laziz and the team in Rabat. And when, when the COVID pandemic happened, we weren't sure how we'd move that forward. And Bernard, with all his team that he put together, he managed to make a progress. So I would like to thank everyone and I'd like to thank all the teachers. So Nadine, to go to your question about how the presentations relate uh, to me, my experience, um, I'd like to mention that for me, it's relevant for my professional, but also my personal experience. So all the presentations were amazing and moved me. But if I could go back to the Daisy's presentations with all these women from Morocco, Madagascar, uh, just to, to name the two countries, they talked about the taboo of sexuality and they mentioned that in causes, there was a lack of communication between parents and children. And one could think that this lack of communication could only be relevant for some sections of the population. Yet, I think it's relevant for everyone. And I'd like to use one example, which is my own example. And perhaps and talk about the reproaches I've made to my own mom about our lack of communication on the period when I was 11, my first period. And I, I, I was quite surprised by this, by this transformation, I have to admit, but my, the entire transformation for me took place a little bit later, but my mom talked me about um, humility. And I think for me, it was a generation's difference. And what I resented was that then I wouldn't choose the same approach for my own children. So I have two girls and I also have a son. And I wanted him to be a responsible adult and committed to his approach to others and to his sisters and his mom, but also to his future um, partner, I guess. So Nadine, I know it's a very, very long answer, but for me, it was a very, very strong personal feeling that was raised by those presentations. So thank you very much, everyone. Claire, thank you so much. And, um, you know, I think these discussions, especially thank in, you a, very in, a, much. in especially in a group of women, they get richer, the more personal that we we go, the more we connect it to our own experiences, the the richer um, the discussion is. So so thank you so much. And I'm sure like many of the women, um, you know, I'm also thinking you're making me think about, you know, what what how, how my mom, uh, you know, handed me a book, for example, on, on sex education. And, and luckily it was a good book, but it was just a book. 
it wasn't a conversation. And I think then it's up to us as as women and all of us here who who are raising girls and boys. Um, how do we want to do that? And I notice it's not so easy. It's like, I don't know about you, but I had great ideas about how it was going to be. And then you're faced with the challenges of, um, you know, the experiences around sexuality and, um, you know, it's quite a challenge. And I think for us as a family, one of the biggest topics was around consent. Um, and that was with my son and with my daughter and um, some good conversations around consent. So I love that the groups and the, the groups, the women that, that, that the women who have worked on these topics are raising and they're they're relevant for all of us. We have so much to learn. So thank you, Claire. Um, uh, Nessa, how about coming over to you? I know it's your first time to kind of drop into the uh, to the to the women's empowerment world, but I know it will be close to your close to your heart because as a woman, we can drop into this space very easily because it just it, it's 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 how we roll. Um, but you know, what's your impression of? You saw five groups. You know, you saw interesting uh, presentations on on mental health on sexual reproductive health on special needs and inclusive education on community based health and you saw the thread of technology all the way through and particularly technology in in contexts where technology is not uh, you know is is not necessarily easy so what kind of you know what what thoughts do you have what feedback um, well, first of all, I'm honoured to be here. Thank you so much um, for the invitation. Um, it's an absolute pleasure for me for me to to meet with this group and and with these amazing women. Um, congratulations to the teams on the work done. I've worked on programs. They're not similar to this, but I've worked on programs in Ireland where people have been set similar challenges. And I have to say that the work isn't comparable, that, that the work done here is absolutely fantastic. So well done to everybody. I do understand, um, you know, working together, you know, that collaboration, the communication, the creativity, the managing of expectations, the relationship building, all of that, never mind the process that these these ladies went through, but the the actual the the the, the impact and the effort that it takes to kind of get a pro these projects complete. I'm astounded at the time that that this work has been done in. So I, I'm just so impressed, genuinely so impressed. Well done, everyone. What what I was what was going through my mind, I mean, I'll get on to the topics in a second, the actual process, you know, to even understand design thinking and to take it from, from the beginning there, to go through, to do the research, the analytics of the data that you found, the conclusions, the visuals to put those presentations together. I know myself from doing presentations, the work it requires to get scripts and timings, you know, there's been so much has been condensed into a really short amount of time, doing it remotely across countries, potentially across languages. I'm not even sure if there's different languages going on um, within the teams themselves. So just the mammoth, the huge amount of effort that went in to, to do this work, just to acknowledge that first of all, um, and that that's stepping aside from the topics. <laughs> um, so well done. Um, it, it's phenomenal, really, really process wise, where I come from looking, I come from a research center and just the rigor of following a process is is, an, is a huge amount of work acknowledging that the the topics then themselves, you know, uh, sim I've had similar thoughts to the other panelists. I'm a mother of three daughters and, and one son. So, you know, I'm you know, I was also triggered uh, with some of the content and and a, given myself an awareness actually of of how I can do a better job um you know the, the topics they, they covered everything you know and, and it's you're really getting into citizen science here and, and at, a, at a micro level but then you know bringing it up to the macro level of of how to um educate more broadly you know and how to utilize the best of social media you know to bring people together to establish communities and to share information you know, at Learn of It, you know, we've always believed, you know, in the power of learning and the power of education. It can change lives. And these are, you know, fantastic examples. These projects are fantastic examples of how they have already, you know, in terms of the people having done this work and sharing the information and sharing it 
in in this format as well I, you know and the, the cross you know the cross collaboration learning that we have going on um I'm so impressed I'm genuinely blown away well done everyone um I I think it's fantastic work Oh, thank you, Nessa. And it's um it's it's just it's wonderful to to um knowing that you're coming into, you know, this is the first time that you're joining the Women's Empowerment Program. I think it gives us all a reference point for just how incredible these groups of women are. And you know, the 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 solutions that that the women are proposing in these areas, you know, th these women are going to go and make these solutions happen. I was just going to say this that isn't an exercise. Where 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 everyone has concluded is 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 a the new starting point of actually doing something right. So everything is entirely realistic and practical and doable, yeah. which which is yeah. phenomenal because often projects can end in something that you know, you know, might be a great idea, but how practical and real is it? Yes. These are really grounded in um in actual implementation and execution and really possible. Absolutely. And Nessie, you said something. I just loved that term, citizen science. What mm. a beautiful term. I hope it translates well into French as well. Citizen science. Can you just what, what does that mean to you, citizen science? And maybe as you're explaining it, what could it mean for us in the education uh, in the education sector? Citizen science. Citizen science. Um, well, I probably at the most basic, I'll go, I'll go basic because that's really where I, what I'm good at. <laughs> Great. Um, it, it's really it's actually finding a way to communicate at a, at a really simple level with everybody so you're informing them it's a it's about mass communication it's it's how do you communicate at a basic level and make it accessible um and and visible and available to a large volume of the population you know it's i think that's really where you can get seismic change you know, if you can really reach into people's homes and in into large numbers of individuals. And that's really what I thought was done really well here is that it, it's kind of the teams broke things down, you know, complex topics. You know, these aren't simple topics, but they were made like we've covered a vast range of, of topics here today. And I felt I understood everything that they were talking wow. about. So well, to me, that's citizen mm -hmm. science, right? So citizen I've left science. here um, educate. I've had a learning experience, you Amazing. know, from, from the people here and, you know, learned from them, both how they communicated their process. You know, that's a, I mean, I don't, don't underestimate um, that as a skill, being able to 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 communicate the way the teams have done. And, and I, you know, the beautiful user interface and presentations yes. that were done and yes i and don't underestimate the the difficulty in simplifying things so people can understand them i love that nessa you know, now not only are, are 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 every all of the women here just incredible smart talented beautiful women but now we're all scientists as well yeah so add that to your uh, add that to your your signature. Thank you, Melissa and um, Madame Laziz. Coming back to you, um, you know, and maybe continuing this theme of of citizen science as you you know as you explain a little bit more, we'd love to hear. We know that you have done and have been responsible for such incredible work in Morocco, and I might say I was in Morocco myself last week, so I have a much better sense of of the country and the people and the vibrancy. Um, what what an amazing amazing country. But in relation to girls health and well-being and citizen science can you tell us a little bit about some of the, the initiatives you've put in place over the years and and just maybe highlight some of the the key learnings that you could share with all of the teachers that are here today all the educators <laughs> I would like to remind you that within our education system, we have as many girls as boys in Morocco. However, the issue is that for both girls and boys, perhaps a little more for girls due to cultural issues and also the distance from schools, because the parents may not let the girls go boarding. So at the end of uh, primary and secondary school, 
the students may leave the school. So the principals work very hard with the students to retain them as much as possible. Um, and we also have some digital initiatives with partners. We do a lot of activities for boot camps. The boot camps are aimed at girls in rural areas. And if I were to talk about what SAP did in Casablanca last year's, some some women visited, uh, some girls visited um, schools and told them about their experience of um, their professional experience. Because the issue we have is it's not just students leaving school, but it's also about women who are in employment, professional women who may end up uh, being married and then will have to make a choice because they have children, uh, they become pregnant and it becomes hard then to juggle work and the house work. So then women often give up their jobs, not the, not the dads, not the fathers. Uh, and that's due to a cultural issue mainly. So other solutions could be found for the women, for the mothers to keep working. Um, and myself, I had two children and uh, I was a mother to them and it was tough when I was working. Uh, and it's true that sometimes you can't divide your time too much, but it's a choice really. Uh, both the workplace and the home place are important. Educating your children is very important, that's for sure. But fulfilling your role within your society uh, as a professional woman to give back to to give back to uh, to society is is important as well. We have a ministry for solidarity that does a lot of work in that area to try and allow or to try and enhance the professional life of women so that they don't just leave their job. But I'm also talking about women who work, who are in a rural area, who end up getting up very early because they have to go and fetch water. They have to get the children up. And it's very difficult because they don't necessarily have the financial support for, for what they need to do. And that's work that is not recognized because it's assumed to be, or it is invisible. Uh, although if you do cross the country in Morocco, you do see that work. So all these reasons mean that if we can keep girls in schools as long as possible, it's very important. And we need to make them aware that once you have completed your studies, you can have a home life. But you can also have a work life as well, professional life for your own welfare and for the society, for the welfare of society as well. Oh, yeah, so so well, so well spoken, Madame Laziz. Um, and I'm just notice I, I'm just really resonating. Um, and I think all of us here have have the ex some some experience of of what you're you're talking about where. You're trying to, you, you, there's things that you want to achieve and things, parts of yourself that you want to share and you want to, um, you, you know, you want to, to bring and, and to, mm -hmm. to make changes in, in the world. And at the same time, you are really, you know, absolutely non-negotiably loving your children and wanting the very, very best for them. And as a, as a single mother, mm -hmm. um, I raised my two children, um, you know, balancing that, 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 that beautiful, the love for them and, and how could I also love myself and give myself 
what was needed in uh, to be able to continue professionally. And I have to say, one of the things that I found uh, so incredible was the support of other women to help me, women friends, my mother, my mom, my sisters, women's friend, women friends in the community, all there to to support and to help. And when women come together, um, I, I think you know incredible things happen, as we can see by today. <laughs> um, Claire, maybe coming to you, and and just to say to all of the women here on the call, if you have questions for uh, any of the panelists, please put them in the chat. And I will direct them to the panelists. Or if you have any specific comment for a panelist, please put them in the chat. This is your space, your time. Please ask anything, um, anything that that it that it that is useful. Um, Claire, how about you? I mean, I know you have such vast experience um, working across Africa, working in in coding and and STEM. You know, it would be great to hear from you. Any initiatives that you'd like to share with um with with the women who are here? Anything that you've come across that you think yes, that was that was really quite incredible. Um, we just love to hear you know your perspective. And I think in this kind of a space, sometimes. It's it, not scripted. It's it, there's, there's just things that we would like to share, things that we think are useful. So, yeah. Alors, enfin, plus que des in... Alors, je peux parler well, I can always talk about initiatives. I can talk for hours about initiatives. That's true. But what I want to say is um, what we do about SAP, because Africa Code Week has had babies. You uh, all know that Africa Code Week is a, a continent-wide initiative to teach coding and to learn coding everywhere. But this initiative spread in other continents under different shapes for each continent. And, for example, in Latin America, we have uh, the Latin Code Week from SAP, and uh, in that Latin Code Week, we were promoting a software use, SAP software use, and we were showing uh, young uh, teenagers in Latin American schools to use SAP software tools. And they could use also a tutorship from SAP. Now, on the other continent in Asia, in Japan, and also in India, we launch with my colleagues a similar initiative. So it's similar to Africa Code Week, but there is a specialty for this region and in particular for this country that is India. So the offer now is to uh, promote employability by learning to use SAP tools. And this is for young people who have just finished secondary school. So they are uh, getting a professional tuition, if you like. In Europe, we have another initiative, and uh, that initiative is called Meet and Code. It's by SAP as well, and uh, it is organized about at the same time as the other initiatives. So that's it. I've mentioned all the other initiatives, Africa Code Week and the different babies that came from Africa Code Week. But what is also interesting to mention is that Africa Code Week, uh, Latin Code Week, Meet and Code, and uh, the other coding in Asia, we must say that SAP is very proud of all those initiatives. And I'm going to answer um, Julia's question from the chat. What is SAP? SAP is a company that creates software, software products. And SAP is the name of our company. And I know uh, really uh, when SAP was born, because it's the same year as myself, 1972. So this company has uh, 51 years. 
and has um, 100,000 employees, and we do have a corporate social responsibility program. And I am honored uh, to manage it for two very interesting regions. The first uh, region, Julia, is EMEA, so Europe, Middle East, and uh, Africa. And the second region is uh, Eastern Europe. And in 2015, SAP, within this corporate social responsibility program, started a partnership. And I'm looking at Ilam here because uh, we, we worked uh, with uh, SAP and, of course, the Ministry of Education from uh, the Kingdom of Morocco and, of course, with Education Code Trust, a Camden Trust in Ireland. So uh, Africa Code Week has different elements. And I know that Alexandra is doing the interpretation and I'm trying not to use English words so that not to confuse everything. So we do have the uh, computer coding strand and Ilam, from what I understand, this is done in schools and there is Africa Code Week in Morocco at the moment and different schools can choose the period during which children, children from schools are uh, taking part and organize uh, IT coding workshops. So we can do it in schools. Then there's also African Code Challenge. And uh, school children of different countries in Africa meet, and the aim is to uh, present a video around the coding that the children have done. So we can have a theme like awareness raising. We can say, for example, we want to protect the environment or preserve the environment. So there are different topics or different themes every time. And the third strand of Africa Code Week is the Women Empowerment Program. It was created in 2019, and we have this joy, this happiness to take part. And I think it is really an honor for me to be able to issues because all those issues are different, but they are equally important. How can we support young girls, young ladies who may encounter problems? How can we make sure that uh, young people, young students in our schools understand what it means to recycle plastic? And here you go, the web creates a smart plastic bin. And uh, how can we help our teenagers or young people who are struggling in depression? This is why we have this program. This is why we have uh, what we heard from the Aisha Chenna group that really hit me in the heart, uh, the work that they've done. It is very important to share. And this really um, had an effect on me because Ilham said, I wasn't, oh, Ilham, I know you, you said things slightly differently, but basically you were saying that I didn't have enough time to give to my boys. And Ilham used one word that struck me, and it was, quality or qualitative and of course qualitative i've been using it for the last 23 years it is a, a big word quality time and today benjamin chloe and eloise my children have understood what quality time is they know now that i can't give them hours and hours and hours of my time nadine you were also saying oh i am a single mom and i'm trying to uh 
enjoy the support of other women and other women around me has helped me. So I also feel you, Nadina. I do have two children who are grown up, but I still have a little one, a little girl who is 14 and she is starting her teenage years and she needs me on a daily basis. So when I tell her, Eloise, mom has to travel, mom has to go to Casablanca, mom has to spend one week away for work. Uh, yes, I could also... Uh, use some yeah. the support of some of uh, other ladies around mm -hmm. and uh, I call my son and I say please will you look after your little sister and he will say yes he lives in Paris we live in Cannes so he puts his career aside to come and look after his little sister and to come and help his mom who is away and that is really important is. for me so thank you thank you all of you for your work and thank you for your sisterhood oh beautiful and we're really really feeling the um the sisterhood you know and I think you know Claire you know Claire one thing is you know when you know you you go away for a week and then you come back but they get the mom who is in the world making a difference that's the mom that they get the quality time they get with the mom they don't have her all the time they don't have her on tap all the time but when they get her oh my gosh and I know my daughter is now 21 and she's studying in college and occasionally you know she says to me oh my god mom it's incredible you know what you do is incredible so I mean isn't that what we want ultimately is to inspire our children to inspire inspire our daughters and our sons so that not so they can do the same as us but that so, so that they can see that if you want to do something it is possible it is possible. And I love um, Ilhan Jabari. I, I know I spoke to you a little a little while ago um, in, in the wellness program. And, I, you know, if it's OK with you, I remember one of the things you were talking about. And if you could spotlight Ilhan Jabari, that would be fantastic. Bring her into into this group. Um, you know, you were talking about coming into the Women's Empowerment Programming Program as a young person and feeling yeah. a little bit intimidated about, you know, sharing your voice and what experience you had to share. And, you know, listening to these women, you could call us aunties, the aunties all <laughs> around you <laughs> um, and the support. I mean, how, how does it feel? What what you know, what is your perspective when you hear this support and what more can we do to support our young women like yourself? I'm super proud. Like you have no idea. I'm super proud. This is this is an incredible feeling to, to see all the support and like you said, it's like a sisterhood, like a womanhood and everything. I'm super proud. And I'm so happy to be part of this uh, of this, uh, this group. Oh, Ilham. And we're just so happy to hear your voice. I mean, if you were taking away from, from this, this is your first experience of the Women's Empowerment Program. What are you taking yes. away for yourself from this experience? I yourself remember. as a professional, yourself as a, as a young woman? I remember when we first talked on this uh, on this program, I was very, very, very scared. And I was very, like, uh, I entered this program with a, with a low self-esteem. I, was, I wasn't feeling enough. I was like, I'm, I'm between all these uh, incredible women, incredible teachers who've been teaching for years. And as a young teacher, and uh, I was very, very... Even like uh, I thought that I was not enough, but as you can see, I think I was enough. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm very grateful. Mm, well, we're I'm so grateful. Proud. We're so grateful and super proud thank to have you, you here. You. And, you know, it's like this, this, this sisterhood is, you know, there's no hierarchy in a sisterhood. Everybody here has something, something to offer, some experience. We all have something to learn from each other. And, you know, Ilham, when I look at you, one of the things that I've learned from you is your courage. I look at you and your courage to share. And, you know, for those of you who, who weren't with us in that session, Ilham just, just shared so courageously and very very personally, very personally. And, you, you know, your vulnerability to me shows leadership. 
and you make it possible for all of us to be vulnerable because you shared that and that's a leader and i love um i love that you uh, you taught us i love that you taught us that um ilham do you have a Thank message you. for for all of the all of these you know older women around you all of us who who love to help young younger women do you have a message for us what should we do more of what can we you know what what should we do to help other young women like yourself young educators um, I have a message for you is keep doing what you are doing right now because you are amazing like uh, and keep helping younger younger women like uh, treat them like uh, I know that some of you when you look at me you see yourself like maybe if five years ago, 10 years ago, and, and everything. So just keep doing that. Keep helping other women, Have keep helping other younger women, and uh, keep inspiring them. That's the, keep inspiring them, because you are inspiring <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, women, are we all hearing the, way, the message? <laughs> This is this is the the meaning of uh, of my name Ilham and yeah. Ilham Madame Ilham Laziz's name as well is inspiration. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Well, no surprise that both of you are here in this panel and have been such an important part of this process and so many other things that are happening in education in uh, in Morocco. Inspiration. Wow, that's incredible. Maybe we have to change the name of the program to Ilham. Uh, I think this uh, this would suit us. <laughs> Thank you, Ilham, for joining us in, this, you, uh, in the panel. Thank so you. beautiful, beautiful to see Thank you. you. Uh, Nessa, I can only just imagine again coming back to you, you know, just dropping in here and just getting a flavor of this. And um, I was going to ask you a little bit about, you know, about your research. And, and I know you, you've got some particular interests in artificial intelligence and, and young women being involved. But, you're, you know, you're welcome to share that or you're welcome to, to, to share anything that comes to you. Um, I, if I was to start on my work, I could, you know, I could run for far too long now, yes. to be honest. So, um, you know, what, you know, what I just was going to add here is, you know, ju just taking on from some of the other points um, about the challenge and quality time and, you know, the, the, ba the balance. And I think is it's, it's funny, it's a struggle that only women have, you know, nobody ever talks about, you know, the balance that men have to have or how do you manage, you know, when I say to people like four kids, they're, they're always like, wow, you know, no one says that to my husband, you know, every, you know, nobody asks him about how we run our lives or how we cope or, you know, but, um, you know, I frequently, you know, I'm a good mom because I work. You know, I'm a good mom because I have that outlet. And, you know, the the fact that you're role modeling for your children, it's, mm. you know, it's really good, but it's the side effect because I need to, you know, this is part of, I need to work as, as a person. And, you know, my kids, when they role play, the mom goes out to work and the dad stays at home and minds the kids because, um my my husband um is a builder and, and you know I don't know what happened in the rest of the world but Ireland had a recession in it from 2008 until about 2010 2012 and he simply had no work and you know he minded the kids and stayed at home and it's really allowed um it's really allowed um me to you know forge my career but I have to also, you know, we're in a women empowerment program and we're talking about empowering women and sisterhood. I'd have had, I'm a very fortunate person. I went, I went to an all girls school in Northern Ireland, which again is, there's a long story there about growing up in, in conflict. But um, regardless of that, we went to a school where the teachers literally told us we could be anything we wanted to be. It never dawned on me. It, I, I never had a doubt that I couldn't do anything I wanted to do, but that's because that's what I was told. And we have a group of teachers here, you know, who have access to many, many students who can tell them the same thing. You know, I, I never had a, I mean, there might be different challenges, but, you know, it's all about the belief that the, the child has within themselves. And, you know, in my career, I've had a few, when I was early in my career, I had opportunities to join women in leadership programs and the organizations I worked in and had mentoring from more senior women as well. 
all of which just added, I mean, I don't even consider this, this is just a, a responsibility we have. It's not, it's not a choice, right? You don't choose to be here. We have a responsibility to be here and to, um, you know, just share, um, sh share our experiences. I mean, you know, there's no right or wrong, you know, working isn't right and staying at home isn't right. You know, there's every human and every person decides for themselves and, and what works for them. But it's, you know, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, I feel part of the sisterhood. I'm in now, uh, so yes. you can't kick me out. Okay? Um, <laughs> um, and, you know, I, I think so long as, as the message of support and collegiality yes. and you know helping each other you know I think just so again if if we could just transmit that and it, it, to everybody yeah. and know that people are there to support you know yeah. that it's a pleasure to do it it's it's not it's not a take on anyone's no. time it's it, as I, said, I think it's a responsibility no. we have oh absolutely uh, love that Nessa thank you so much for for sharing that and we're delighted you're part of this sisterhood and you know once you're in you you, you will never you'll be ne never let go now and you know I love what, listening to you Claire talking about your experience with um, Ilham Laziz Madame Laziz it's like you you two met at some point uh, however many years ago on one particular project and all of the things that have happened as a result of that all of the things that you have inspired, that you've continued to work together, that you've, in, you know, you come together and this is what women do. We come together, we inspire each other, then we work together on something and then we go off and we do other things with other people because of that connection. So um, it's beautiful to see what uh, what else might happen um, as we continue in the years. I'm going to do something very radical in this women's empowerment program, and I'm going to invite a man into um, into the space. And I've never done that before. We have never done that before. But Bernard, I would love for you to come into this space because it is the, the fifth anniversary of the women's empowerment program. And because, um, you know, because because all of us, you know, we we we're, we're so supported not only by women, but also by men. And uh, it's just it feels it feels right to um, to have you and to, to hear your voice, Bernard, if we can do that. So if somebody can bring Bernard into this uh, into this spotlight, I can't see him yet, but I know he's coming. He's probably just putting on his lipstick for us, you know, making sure that he looks. There he is. There he okay, is. Good. There he is. I see him. I see him. <laughs> With an echo. Nadine, Nadine, if I can permit, in attendant. Nadine, if I may, while Bernard is on the way, I would like to thank someone that we don't see and whose voice we don't hear, but who is a complete part of the team and who makes the program totally successful. And it is Linda. Cardiff. So Linda, thank you. Thanks a million for all your support. We don't speak enough about you, but we do thank you and we're very grateful for all your work. Thank you. Oh, that's super. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you, Claire, for that. Um, and yes, nothing happens without Linda in this space. Uh, Bernard, it's very unusual to see a man on our screen, um, but we uh, we we know and trust you very well um, as such a supporter. You know, for you listening to this, and um, you know, for you being being you know a co-founder with Claire and having the vision for the Women's Empowerment Program uh, five years ago, um, you know, what are the things that you are are seeing, and what's inspiring you most, and 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 you know how just just some feedback from yourself in terms of how how you feel and. How you see this going in the future? I mean, where could it possibly end? I'm in the French channel because I'm recording in French. So I have a problem. Aha. Uh -huh. oh. oh dear, we have an echo, we have a problem. So Bernard, you're gonna have to um put something into the chat for us. Um and and while we're all here, I, you know, I'm just inviting all of the women to um you know, all of the women, you're welcome to to share a heart, share some love with Bernard, share some, uh, you know, some appreciation for him for all that he does. And Bernard, we're really grateful uh, to you for for your uh, your vision and your confidence in us, and just for the support uh, and for giving us the platform. It's um, it's really wonderful. 
So as we just finish up this fireside, and I don't know about you guys, but I feel so electrified. There's so much energy from um, from, from this kind of a conversation. Uh, when women start to talk, it's incredible what happens. Um, Madame Leziz, come into yourself, Ilham. Um, do you have a final message for us, for all of the incredible women educators who are here? We have 58 of us online at the moment. What would be your message to, to everybody here today? Oh, we you're muted, and we definitely don't want you to be muted. I think you have all said it, and it's about support and supporting each other. I remember 15 years ago in 2006, when I entered <clears throat> the National Education Department, there were two big departments, scientific research and education. And as you know, I did very long studies. So I started working very late. I was 40 because my studies took so long. Yet, when I started at the department, I encountered loads of issues because it's so many students, with 50 million students, 300,000 teachers, and anything digital was a massive issue. And it remains an issue, actually. And I had really, really big difficulties but what helped was the training courses I did myself, plus all the extracurricular activities like yoga. It was looking after my well being. I look after my well being so I can keep working. Some days, what was difficult was thinking about students, pupils, and teachers who said to me that. But that digital tools changed their life. Like, I still meet children in Rabat who've never touched a digital tool to this day. But today, we cannot escape technology. It's everywhere in our professional lives. And we must teach yes. those skills to students and I'm absolutely grateful to Claire and Bernard to bring coding to Morocco because the African Code Week in Morocco was crucial. It has been crucial. We now teach technologies right. in schools and we are working on getting it to the most rural areas. So thank you very much and thank you, Bernard. Wow, thank you. And thank, thank you. you, Linda, and thank you, everyone. <laughs> oh, so beautiful. Um, we are running out of time, fast running out of time on the fireside. So I'm going to do a terrible thing and ask Claire, Nessa and Ilham, Ilham Jaberi, just for one word. One word that you would share with us as you um, as you step down from the fireside today. Uh, Claire. I don't think I managed. <laughs> okay, I'm maybe sure women and will. one word is not so easy. I know that. This is not and it's impossible, impossible for me. Impossible for me. And for Alexandra, it might be a problem. So, so you are absolutely inspiring. Please, please keep going, educating people and keep enhance your energy and Nessa and Ilham Jabari, I have a little word for you as well. You are part of the generation that will replace us, uh, Ms. Laziz, Nadine and myself. So we are delighted. I was delighted to meet you, to hear you, and I would like to send you loads of love. Beautiful. Thank you, Claire. Uh, Nessa, last word from you. I was, I'm debating between um, inspiring and innovative. You know, I'm so inspired here by all these amazing women, by this panel, by the, uh, the ideas, the creativity, but also the innovative thinking that's gone into every element, both the projects, but this as a program itself, the fact that we're all here, the opportunity, that that it that it presents and and the change that can be driven and, and transformation that that may be driven from all of this. So lots of words bombing in there, but you know it's really coming from inspiration. 
Absolutely beautiful. Thank you, Nessa. Love to hear that. Ilham, Ilham Jimberry, have you got one word for us? Yeah, I would like to say thank you to all of you. Merci, merci beaucoup à vous uh, pour cette opportunité. Thank you very much to all of you for this opportunity. Sending you love. <laughs> love everybody let's just uh let's drop the uh the panel please let's put the whole full screen if we can see everybody together let all of us see everybody and if you can turn your videos back on everyone turn your videos on just for a moment just so we can feel the connection and feel the love not just send the love and everybody welcome to send love to the panelists and to each and every one of you amazing we are on fire, Vicky. That's what a fireside should do. Back to you for Teacher's Corner. Thank you so much. I don't even think my shoes are, you know, my feet are big enough to fill those amazing big shoes that you've just uh, stepped out of, Nadine. So that's absolutely amazing. So thank you so much for an electrifying fireside chat. And it's a big, heartfelt thanks to our guests today, Claire, Elam, Nessa and the other Elam. So thank you so, so much. So your insights really on the fireside were extremely precious to all of us. And we appreciate your time and your commitment to the program. So a big thank you to everyone from the WEP alumni group that has joined us from the previous semesters this morning. It was wonderful to see all of you, to see so many familiar faces. And we certainly hope that you enjoyed this morning as much as we did. So as we continue to move with the program, we just want to encourage, if possible, and if your schedules permit for our guests to stay on just a little bit longer as we continue with our program. So moving on to one of our signature features here at the Women Empowerment Program, it's something we call the Teacher's Corner. This is so exciting for us to do because we go from country to country, virtually across borders, and get to learn a little bit about what all these amazing women on this program get up to in their respective community. So last week, we watched a video from Virginia, from Kenya, and this week, we have two videos that we are going to share with you. We're going to start with a video from Julia. Julia comes from Kenya. So let's hear from Julia. My name is Julia Kiyu from Kenya. I am a teacher of religious studies and Swahili language. I teach in a school called Rurumo High School, a school that was established in 1951 by Boa Settlers with 25 boys and 25 girls. It is impressive to say that the school has grown its population to around 1,068 boys and 950 girls. Due to its performance in both curricular and co-curricular activities, the school attracts learners from all over the country. My class has a total of 54 girls who are very passionate about learning new skills every day. They have been doing tremendously well in mathematics, for example, and the only way this has happened was through their positive attitudes towards it, and also their good relationship with teachers. Rurumo High School is a STEM accredited center. That means that it is a beehive of activities. Therefore, students get engaged in STEM activities apart from their daily learning schedule. Under science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, I am a coach of robotics club that uses computer softwares, coding, and programming language to design and program robots. We expose learners to WRO, national and international competitions, and last year, my team emerged the best in Kenya. They got a chance to represent the country in the final International World Robotics Olympiad that was held in Dortmund, Germany, which was such an amazing experience. In Kenya, teaching is among the noble professions that attracts or commands a lot of respect, especially in rural areas. Teachers have the role of transforming boys and girls into great men and women in the society. To me, this is so fulfilling. In my three years teaching experience, I have learned to integrate ICT in teaching and learning by use of YouTube videos, AI, and information, and Microsoft Office. 
and this has made learning very interesting. On the other hand, it has been a challenge convincing girls that they can do well in engineering and technology related fields as their counterpart gender. It has therefore called for a very strong campaign to populate this idea. I must say that it has been a journey of inspiring and transforming lives. I look forward to inspire and empower more. From Kenya, this is Teacher Julia. Julia, that was absolutely amazing. I am just mind blown just thinking about the focus of the Women Empowerment Program uh, this semester was around robotics, was around AI, and it is wonderful to see the strides that are being made in Kenya by even participating on the global stage on the World Robotic Olympiad. So this is absolutely amazing. And this is the content, actually, that we love to see on the Women Empowerment Program. But that's not the only video uh, that we'd love to show you today. Let's move over to Morocco and see what Haida has for us. Good morning, ladies. I am Haida Saadu, an English teacher in uh, Sakhir Hamra High School. Sakhir Hamra, by the way, is a river in uh, Laayoun City, south of Morocco. Uh, I uh, have been teaching uh, since 2011. Uh, I got my baccalaureate in 2000. At that time, it's uh, forbidden for girls to travel alone, but my father helped me and supported me, okay, to study. Uh, I got my, uh, I graduated. Then I got my master degree in a city, in the spiritual city called Fez. Um, I love teaching because uh, women in general love to give and uh, teaching is giving is giving and to see the results on the students mark is very is very nice feeling i love this program empowering women technology especially in technology since we have uh, we cannot live without technology uh, and during those weeks this, those sessions, uh, I learned a lot, learned a lot, very easy uh, ways to help me teaching, uh, thanks in advance. Uh, uh, during, uh, during teaching, I love to, to do extra, extra work, for example, uh, do a lot of activities uh, each, in each unit, uh, for example, citizenship, unit citizenship, I love to do many activities with students, for example, um, uh, talking about human rights. Uh, so, thank you so, so much. Thank you so, so much, Haida. We enjoyed hearing from you. In fact, we'd love to just show them some love. So can we have Haida spotlighted on the screen, please? And can we also have Julia? Because we'd love to share how we are feeling and how inspired and how motivated the two of you today have made us. So a huge, huge shout out. There they are, such beautiful faces. A huge, huge shout out to you, Haida. To you, Julia, you are two amazing powerhouses, and we enjoyed you sharing the things that make you tick as educators. So a lot of love from us to you, and keep doing what you're doing. You're absolutely amazing. So thank you so, so much. And we've really enjoyed the fireside uh, chat as well as the Teachers Corner, and these have been, as I've said, uh, regular features of the Women Empowerment Program. And obviously, this being the, the last session for semester two, 2023, we look forward to seeing more of this uh, next time. So if you managed to send through a Teachers Corner video and we did not feature it in this particular uh, session, with your permission, we'd love to share that on social media. You could reach out to Linda and give her a little bit of a thumbs up to then say she can do that. So 
We are moving on to another very, very, very interesting section of the Women Empowerment Program, one that we always look forward to every Thursday, the one that cools us down, the one that slows down the pace, and this is our wellness section held down by our very brilliant Nadine. It's over to you. Thank you, Vicky. Thank you, thank you. Um, and, you know, I was thinking about the, the fireside there and what Madame Laziz, Laziz said about well-being. And, um, you know, first of all, inviting you all to turn your cameras on for this session. Just because you know how much I love when the cameras are on, all the connection. Um, and, you know, well-being, as Madame Laziz says, she's really looked after her well-being. And I have to say that's something of a similarity between you, Madame Laziz, and myself, is well-being is is something that is really a priority for me in my life. I've made it a priority so that I can stay as well as I can in my mind and as well as I can in my body so that I am available for my children and I'm available and clear to do the best kind of work that I can do in this world. So well-being isn't a little thing. And for me, it's not an add-on. It's not something that I, I I add on to my life. It's something that is a central, central part of my life. So I was thinking about what, what we would, you know, what to focus on today. And I thought what would be interesting is to have a recap, a recap today of all of the different pieces of well-being, the little things that tools and approaches that we have, um, that I've introduced over, over the weeks, because well-being is an interesting thing. There are some things that appeal to some people and other things that appeal to other people. And it doesn't matter what you do. It's not important what you do. What's important is that you do something of wellness. <laughs> That's my experience. So before we even have the recap, you know, well-being is about the, the feeling of well-being, not just the theory of thinking about what it is to be well. So I'm inviting you all just to close your eyes, to take a moment, if you're comfortable, just to close your eyes. And just to notice how you feel. Notice the sensations in your body. Notice the emotions that you can feel. And just start to become aware of how your body is this morning. And notice if in this awareness, there's any spaces that are a little bit tense. Ah, and if there are, you know, welcome to move your neck or your back or your legs and just relax. And taking a big deep breath in through your nose and out and in through your nose and out and again in through your nose and out and just reflecting on all of the love and the inspiration that has been shared today and in these six weeks. And when you can, see if you can breathe in all the love and inspiration in through your nose. And again, breathe in all the love that we create as this group. And then notice, here we are, this group of women. And now imagine what that group of women extends to in our communities, our families, our communities, our country, all of our countries, the world. Feel the women, that beautiful energy 
the love, the love that happens. And when you're ready, breathe in the love. Allow yourself to really breathe it in as deeply as it can go. More time breathing in all of the love as deeply as you can. And then just release your breath. And notice that this is available to you any time, any place. That you can close your eyes, connect with us, connect with women all over the world, and breathe love. So just checking back in with yourself. And again, just checking, how am I feeling? What sensations do I feel in my body? What emotions do I feel? How is my thinking this morning? How are my thoughts? What kind of thoughts are running through my head this morning? Just taking one more breath in through your nose. And when you're ready, you can gently come back to our room, to this group of women, to yourself. You're welcome to put your hand on yourself. No, it's a lovely thing to do. Simple thing to do. Yeah. So just notice the effect of that literally probably four minutes that we spent together there. Just four minutes. <laughs> and notice, do you feel a little bit calmer? Yeah, a bit more connected to the world, to yourself. And in a space like this, you know, we're all feeling so good because of the connection and the inspiration. And on a day when you're not feeling so good, <laughs> when you're in your classroom and it feels so difficult or you're at home or something's going wrong, to be able to take a little four minutes for yourself just to recenter. So on a recap, you know, a few of the things that we did in these in this time together, we did something at the beginning called stop. <laughs> Can anybody remember stop? S-T-O-P. Can you remember? A <laughs> little bit? <laughs> yeah. Mwajuma remembers it a little bit, right? It's like, yeah, something like that. So stop. S. Simply stop. T, take three deep breaths. O, observe. How am I feeling? And P, proceed with presence. Mm -hmm. Stop. Mm -hmm. S-T-O-P. So that was one thing. Another thing we did was just very simply three deep breaths. Don't even need to close your eyes. Three deep breaths, but in through your nose, breathing as deeply as you can, letting your breath fill as much of your body cavities as it can, and out through your mouth. Three times. 
And I know from my experience, if you're in a situation where it's difficult or it's conflictual or you feel stressed, that three, those three breaths can be the difference in how you respond in a moment how you respond to stress, how you respond to an argument. And then your response is the reason things can be calm. So three deep breaths. Simple, simple. Um, box breathing. Fantastic thing to do with young kids. So you might remember with box breathing, it's like you breathe up, you breathe, you hold your breath, you breathe out and you hold your breath. And so, for example, we can do it here just to remind us. Let's do it to the count of four. So ready? Breathing in, two, three, four, and hold, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four, and hold, two, three, four, and in, two, three, four, and hold, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four, and hold, two, three, four. And then coming back. So that's box breathing. Another one that we did was, do you remember the video, You Are More Beautiful Than You Think? Yeah, <laughs> Marianne, you're remembering that video. It was such a beautiful, beautiful video. Lila, also you, I see your smile there. You know, you are more beautiful than you think. We walk through the world and if we're asked to describe ourselves, we might say, you know, we have a certain way of describing ourselves. And then when we see how other people describe us, it's it, it's amazing how other people describe us. Um, so to remember, you are more beautiful than you think. And welcome to share that video with your daughters, with your sons, with your classrooms, with your mothers. It's a beautiful video. You are more beautiful than you think. Another one we did was the five senses. The five senses. So, for example, uh, let's see. One thing that you can see right now, so you can say it to yourself, you can keep your microphones muted. One thing that you can see. One thing that you can hear. One thing that you can smell. One thing that you can taste. And one thing that you can feel. either from the inside of you or something, a contact, a surface that you're touching, the five senses, an incredible way to bring yourself back to presence, five senses, especially if you're really upset, if you're really upset, the five senses is a beautiful way to ground yourself and connect back with yourself. Another thing we did a few weeks, one of my favorite practices in my own life is questioning your thoughts. <laughs> Do you believe everything you think? The work of Byron Katie, identifying thoughts that cause you stress, like she's not listening to me, I'm not good enough, I'm never going to succeed, this is too hard, I'm too young, I'm too old, I'm too slim, I'm too fat. <laughs> Thoughts that cause us stress and then questioning those thoughts using those four questions and the turnarounds. Is it true you're not good enough? Can you absolutely know that it's true that you're not good enough? How do you react? What happens when you believe and live your life thinking you're not good enough? 
And then who would you be without the thought? Simply without the thought, who would you be? And then ways to turn the thought around. The opposite, I am good enough. <laughs> and then finding the evidence for that. The examples. And then noticing, oh, it's my thinking that's not good enough. Not me. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. So those four questions and the turnarounds. There are some videos. Linda is hopefully putting things in the chat as we go along. That's going to give you all the guidance. And, and you can always ask us if you need something afterwards. Three kinds of business. Remember that one. Three kinds of business. Whose business are you in? Because there's only my business. There is your business. And then there is God's business. The, the business of the universe. Spending your time in other people's business. Thinking they need to do better. They need to... They need to look after themselves. They need to get a job. They shouldn't be late. Oh, the stress. Can I control their business? No, <laughs> just my business. So noticing when you feel stressed or you feel lonely, whose business are you in? Are you in God's business again, thinking you're God? <laughs> Could be. <laughs> Coming back to my business. Simple, simple, simple. Yeah. So... They are some of the practices that we were that we went through in in this wellness. A few techniques, things that can help you. Um, one technique we didn't get a chance to do is a gratitude practice. And it's not complicated. It's just as it sounds, a gratitude practice, you know. What are you grateful for? With my kids for about two years, we had a jar on the table in our uh, kitchen. And at the end of every day, each of us would write one thing that I'm grateful for on a piece of paper and we would put it into the jar. And we just kept putting the gratitudes in the, in the jar. I'm grateful, like for, for example, in this moment, Hasna, what are you grateful for? One thing that you're grateful for. well-being beautiful yeah. love that Khadija one thing you're grateful for everything everything I have I'm grateful to have it family work everything beautiful so just feel mm -hmm. that in your body Feel what it feels like to be grateful, to feel gratitude. Ilham, what are you grateful for? I'm grateful for being a woman. Oh, so beautiful. Yeah, just feel that, you know, grateful, so grateful. It's a beautiful practice, you know, and these practices that, that I'm sharing with you today, all of these practices, they do actually affect our brain neurologically. They start to change the shape of your brain. When you calm down, when you use your breath, when you question your thinking, when you practice gratitude, it starts to change the patterns in your brain. You know, I change, the world changes. That is my experience. I change, the world changes. And Ilham, on that beautiful note of, of, you know, grateful to be a woman, we have a beautiful exercise that we like to finish with in this course at the end of our, in, in our celebration. And it's called the Divine Feminine. The divine feminine. What a beautiful, beautiful name. And each and every one of us are a divine feminine. Um, inviting you all, please, to turn your cameras on. Unless you really cannot, please turn your cameras on and don't miss this exercise. It's a beautiful exercise. It's a beautiful exercise. And first, I want to share a card with you that somebody may or may not be able to read. Vicky, if you can help me with this, this would be great just because. Let's have a look. Can you see this card? This is a beautiful card. It's from a Divine Feminine card deck that I use in my workshops. Can you see her? Can you see her or no? Maybe if we can spotlight Nadine so we can see that a bit more clearly. So it's, it's Yemoja. Here she is. Look how beautiful she is. This divine feminine goddess. 
Okay, here she is, the emoji. So Vicky, can you read her for us yes. what she is? Yes, go ahead. Absolutely. Oops, okay, so if you can just hold it steady there. Trying. Perfect. The goddess of all that flows. I am an ocean of creative energy. I give, oh, wow, okay. Whoops. I'm missing the last line there. All right, so it's what? not really clear, so I'm missing the last line there. Okay, so I'm going to read it for yeah. us. It's the goddess of all that flows. I am an ocean of creative energy. I give birth to what exists within me. Okay, there she is. The goddess of all that flows. I am an ocean of creative energy. I give birth to all that exists within me. We're going to share this card with all of you so you can take this card for yourself into your life for whatever it means to you. And right now, I invite you all to look at the screen and to just notice, find, find one woman that has really inspired you during this course. It cannot be Vicky and it cannot be me. <laughs> Find, look at look at the beautiful faces or the names for those who can't turn it on, but look at the faces, the names. I want you to pick one woman who's really inspired you. And then I want you to write down three things, three things about this woman that you admire really quickly. Let's move really quickly, women. Three things that you admire about this woman. Write them down, whether it's on your phone or... Okay, <clears throat> good, excellent. Okay, um, Marianne, have you found a woman? Okay, who is the woman that you have looked at? Who is the woman? Julia. Julia, okay, could you spotlight for us, Marianne and Julia, please? So Marianne, can you please tell us, let's just have them spotlighted. Here's Julia's beautiful smiling face. <laughs> Excellent. Here's Julia coming beside you, Marianne. Okay, great. Marianne, can you tell us what are the three things that inspired you about Julia? And Julia, for you, please, the invitation is to say nothing except thank you. Nothing at all except thank you. Okay. I wish I had more to say about Julia. Julia what did, you, what did is, you write? What did you write? The three things. I wrote talented, mm -hmm. creative, and beautiful. Oh. Julia, for you to say? Um, Just I to thank say you. thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. The <laughs> love. <laughs> Sweet. Okay, Marianne, now I want you to turn it to yourself. So three things I admire about myself are I am. Um, hardworking. Um, what did you say about Julia? You said talented. Talented. What were, what were the three things? Creative. Yes. And beautiful. Oh. So sweet. <laughs> Thank you both. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Welcome. Julia, Julia, who did you write? Who did you pick? What woman? Mm -hmm. Coincidentally, I picked Kauna Marian, the same lady. Oh, how beautiful. Okay, so what did you say about Marian? She was our group leader. She was uh -huh. a group leader, and I know I admired her leadership skills. Yep. Very bold. She's also very creative. Super. And very enthusiastic, full of energy. <clears throat> Sweet. Yeah. Marion, for you? Thank Just... you, Julia. Yes. Sweet. Um, and now, Julia, for you to turn it to yourself, please. I am enthusiastic. I'm creative. I have leadership skills. Yeah. Yes. So beautiful. Oh, absolutely gorgeous, ladies. So beautiful. I'm going to take one more before we run totally out of time. Uh, how about 
Samifimaliana. My goodness. Samifimaliana. Hello, my dear. Can you hear me? <clears throat> Sami. Yes, there you are. Hi. <laughs> Precious. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Vaita Kunlein. Malalosoa. Hi. Yes. Yes. Can you unmute yourself? Hi, my dear. Yes. Bonjour à toutes. Hi. Who did you choose to admire? Ines. Who, who, who was it? Notre animatrice. Okay. Can she come Ines. on? Ines. Ines. Can you yep. come on? Ines. Our facilitator. Excellent. Yes, I'm here. Ah, let's see. There you are. Super. Hello. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh -huh. Hello. Okay. Hi. So, Sammy, what were the three so, things that you admired about Ines? Ta douceur. She is a very gentle person. She's a very nice person and she's very brave. She's very smart. Thank you. Beautiful. And now, Sammy, for you, what turn those things to yourself. I am, the things I admire about me are. Je suis... I am gentle, intelligent and brave. Well done. Oh. oh. How many people feel so connected to Sami and to Ines in this moment? And you can welcome to put back on the gallery, please, to drop the, the, the spotlight. How many people feel so connected to these beautiful women in this moment? You can put your hand up if you feel so connected. <laughs> right. So beautiful. Thank you for your courage and for sharing and for your vulnerability and for the love it's very beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. And for everybody, please put in the chat as we move forward to the end of our graduation. If you can put in the chat the woman that you might have identified and put in the three things about that woman to share it with her. And then please take the time to share those things with yourself. Share those things with yourself. Yeah. So beautiful. Lots of love to everybody. There's so much love in this room. <laughs> Vicky, I'm handing it back to you. Thank you so much, Nadine. What an amazing, an amazing session we've just had. And, and you see, this is the reason why we cannot get enough of the Thursday wellness. We look forward to this all the time because this is such an overflow of love, of inspiration, of motivation. It's it's really hard to follow up on this. It's really amazing. So moving Vicky, along. Um, yes. Can I ask something? Yes, Aida, go ahead. Uh, today is my birthday and uh, this is the last oh. session. <laughs> I wish these uh, those uh, powerful ladies to wish me... Uh, uh, best wishes. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, beautiful. Happy Ooh. birthday, Haida. Lots Thank of you. love from Thank us you. to you. Thank you so, so much for sharing that. Thank you so, so much for sharing that. And please, let's give her lots of love in the chat, mm -hmm. on the screen. And here's to many more, Haida. Here's to many more Thank beautiful, you. blessed Thank years you. in your life. Um, awesome. So there we are, always a wonderful community of ladies. And in fact, before I move move on, I just want to say a special welcome to one of our one of our favorites here at the Women Empowerment Program, Jacqueline uh, Arici Uludi. She's she's always uh, you know supporting the Women Empowerment Program. We see you. Thank you so much for taking the time out to join us. But before we get into the business of the day, which is the graduation, which we're all sitting on the edge of our seats for, I'm going to ask Linda to speak to us a little bit about the research that's been going on at Webby. Linda, take it away. Thanks so much, Vicky. And um, thanks to Nadine. I just love that particular section and I always feel so calm. I kind of have to rev myself back up again now to kind of do this piece. 
But um, and just in terms of Vicky, I want to thank you hugely for your contribution to the programme over the last couple of semesters. What we saw today was a journey of work that was done over three semesters. Um, I was very lucky to meet Vicky this year, thanks to the support of Nessa here um, and Lernavate. And it was wonderful to meet Vicky in person. So she's as lovely in person as she is to us on screen. So thanks, um, Vicky. So I just, um, I'm, the presentations were absolutely amazing today. And as I've said, it's a journey that you that we have come through on it. Um, and I just have a presentation there that we're just going to load. But while that's loading, um, you know that this is, um, we're marking the fifth birthday of the Women Empowerment Programme. Um, and the programme has changed shape um, from an in-person event in 2019, which was mentioned earlier, to an online platform in 2020. So it continues to change shape as we adapt to meet your needs and um, based on the feedback and research we conduct through the various sessions. Um, but your um, continued input and how we approach the programme is vital to the success of the programme. Um, so today I wanted to give you a little overview of how the Women Empowerment Programme looks today and to get your input into how we can shape it for next year. Um, so I, I don't want you to do anything now, but I want you to have a little think um, about maybe plans you might come up with for next year. So we will send out a survey uh, next week and we'll ask everybody to complete it. And that will be alumni as well. Um, some of you will have completed something similar before, in, um, but I'm asking you to complete it again for 2023. And the reason right. being is that it's important for us to keep our information about the work that you do, about the subjects that you teach, about the school sizes, the students. Um, and it's important that that is up to date and relevant. Um, and that's important for us to continue, continually evaluate particular areas of the programme. So I'll just, I'm not sure if I have control of this, but I'll jump on to that. Can I go to the next slide, please? So this is the little snapshot view of the programme as it stands um, at the moment. Um, we have 509 uh, alumni, so that's individual participants that are sitting um, on the on the programme itself from over four, well, from 40 countries. I, I, I was used to saying over 39, but we now have reached the 40 mark. We have 656 attendees. So I'll just explain that and um, what I mean by that. If I just move on to the next slide. Okay, so some of you will be aware that we run a progression model. And by that, I mean that you come in as a participant, um, as a new attendee, and we invite you back to take the role of a facilitator in, an, in a further subsequent uh, semester. We then encourage you to consider becoming a presenter, and that could be the presenter within your group, that could be presenting your teacher's corner, that can be presenting in a whole uh, range of different ways. The special host was introduced uh, two semesters ago, and you'll remember meeting Leonida and Anna on this particular program, and they were special hosts that moved into the co-moderator role. And we now have a country host. So Vicky, who is the full moderator on this particular program, has come right through the progression model, and she's actually hosted her own event in Zimbabwe, where she invited Zimbabweans into a, a set of learn about a set of digital skills from from her perspective and from uh, ad addressing their particular needs. So that's the progression model. So just move on to the next slide. So. Basically, the research that we conduct from semester to semester, you'll see that you contributed to Mentimeter over the course of the, the programme. We also have completed surveys um, previously in other semesters. So the research tells us that so far um, you uh, have had an opportunity to review your practice as an educator against SDGs 3, 4, 5 and 17. We know the programme enables you to develop your capacity in design thinking skills. And I think you'll agree from the presentations we saw today, it's absolutely fine tuned, it's amazing. The research also tells us um, about some of the perceived barriers that you believe are there for your local community. And these include health barriers, education, community and policy. We know from our research that the Women Empowerment Programme participants come from small island nations and mainland African countries. And in addition to French, English and Arabic spoken within the group, 
over 20 local languages are spoken by participants of the program. So it's quite um, good research and, and important research. We know that 90% of participants who have attended the Women Empowerment Programme self-identified as a leader at the end of the programme. And this gives us great hope, but it also gives us a huge amount of motivation to look at your needs and your requirements to build the programme for next year. So next slide, please. This is just a little view of what um, a semester looks like, or sorry, a year looks like. So we conduct some research, you know, all of the time, but it's helpful to do it a year kind of before uh, 2024, we'll say, or 2023. You'll see in the middle there, in the love heart, we have two semesters. This year, we ran a dual track. We had facilitators and participants. So for those of you who uh, were facilitators the last time, the last semester, we asked you to attend on a Tuesday and a Thursday. This time around, we adapted it because we felt that it, that wasn't necessary. There's a lot of time um, required from the classroom. So we felt that we would tailor it this time. And we had two facilitator sessions and six workshop sessions. We also introduced special events this year. We introduced CPD training and financial literacy, ethics in AI and the science of leadership. So and we had a, a local chapter event, as I've spoken about that Vicky had. So for next year, um, this is what we, we want to find out. So we want to know what way we should approach next year. Um, and we want you to help us shape that offering. So we'd like to know, um, as I said, the survey link will go out to you. We want to know how you think the programme has impacted on your experience of being an educator. And in turn, then, how you think it has impacted on your students. So as I say, um, we'll send out a survey next week. Now it is a long survey, so you will have to spend about 20 minutes on it. And we would really appreciate it if we did. Um, and as an incentive, a small incentive, anybody that completes it, we'll enter you into a raffle for um, a 50 euro uh, data bundle. So we'll offer three of those. So, um, so remember the 20 minutes, it really gives us a lot of value, but also there's an incentive there. So um, I'll hand you back now to uh, Vicky and Nadine. Um, but if you have any questions about the survey when it comes in, please just give me a shout, email me or whatever. And um, I'm happy to answer any questions. All right, thanks. Awesome. Thank you so, so much, Linda, for showing us just the progression of the Women Empowerment Program, particularly over the last five years, and how wonderful it is that we're looking at taking on a new direction in 2024, and everybody in the web alumni is going to help us do that. And while I have you here speaking about the web alumni, we just want to remind everybody as we look at the next steps that we want to take as we uh, prepare to wind down our program, it's making sure that if you are a web alumni that you join the WhatsApp group. This is basically where we communicate upcoming events and keep news flowing in all year long. So it gives you an opportunity to meet, greet, share your pedagogical experiences with the like-minded people that you have met in this program. It's very important as well for you to stay tuned for any information regarding the specific skills workshops that take place during the year. And Linda just mentioned that we've had a couple of uh, CPD programs that we've been able to run parallel to the actual Women Empowerment Program. With regards to your attendance to this program, you may want to claim your certificate by completing the certificate claim form, we will make sure that that reaches you via WhatsApp and it will also be on chat on the chat now. So somebody is going to uh, post that there. Please ensure that you complete this by Thursday, November the 23rd. So that one is to ensure that you get your certificates. Then you also want to claim your certificate um, and also uh, fill out the web survey form. So Linda spoke about this form. She also spoke about an incentive that will be there for you to be entered into a raffle for one of three data bundles worth 50 euros. So that's just a gentle reminder for us to keep at the back of our minds. So now comes the time that we've all been waiting for. It's been a grueling six weeks. It's been 
absolutely amazing just watching each and every one of you go from complete strangers to sisters. And it's an amazing sisterhood that the Women Empowerment Program is able to create every semester. I just cannot get over how many sisters across the African continent and beyond I now have as a result of the Women Empowerment Program. So as we get into our graduation, I want to give a special shout out and I hope they're all here to our facilitators. We are really excited every year that we get a sizable number of women that go the extra mile and say they will definitely volunteer to be uh, part of the facilitators group going above and beyond leading the different groups and the different teams of the women that they meet. So if it's possible, can the facilitators from this semester, please turn on your cameras so that we could see you and everybody else, we would love to show them some love and we can do that by using our reactions or just making the heart sign with our hands as we always do to say thank you so much to the facilitators. I see Hasna is there. Um, can we have, can we maybe see the others? Maybe we can spotlight them as well. And just to say a huge, huge thank you. The work, the hours that you put in, we see absolutely everything that you do. You're working behind the scenes, over weekends, in the WhatsApp groups, after hours. We see all of that. And that just speaks to the dedication that you have to the program. And it's the words thank you aren't even enough at this point. So thank you so, so much. Please feel appreciated and loved by everybody on the Women Empowerment Program. And of course, to each and every woman that has been involved in the groups this semester, from group one all the way up to group six, you should be very, very proud of yourself. You should be very proud of what you have achieved. And most importantly, we want you to know that we are in absolute awe of the amazing work that you have put out in just six weeks. Now, when we think about it and contextualize that we only meet once every six weeks and you're able to put together all that amazing showstopper stuff, that is nothing short of superwoman type of uh, behavior. I don't even know where you get the energy, um, but you are absolutely amazing and we love you for it. So it's a big thank you again to our groups. I'll take the time to um, sort of speak to them and hopefully you can turn on your camera as I call out the group name so that we can see you and we can give you some love. So group one, the Diamond Divas. The Diamond Divas, where are you? Please wave, Diamond Divas. Diamond Divas, yay! Congratulations, congratulations. Yeah. Yay! Hi, Joy. Thank you, good morning. Thank you, it yes. was a pleasure. I enjoyed the semester. Thank you. And we enjoyed seeing you in the semester. Thank you so much, Joy. Group three, the STEM queens. Where are you, the STEM queens? The STEM queens. We can see them. Yay! Yay! Hey, Lila. So it's it's so amazing when you see everybody on the screen and 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 the excitement. It's 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 a huge sigh of relief, isn't it? So congratulations, congratulations to the STEM queens. Congratulations, bold women, bold women. Where are you, the bold women? The bold women. I'm looking for you on the screen. Yay. So congratulations to group four. That was group four, the bold women. Very excited. Group five, Aisha Chenna. Woohoo! There we go, Yalam. There we go. Hi, Hasna. So we're so excited to see Hadija. We're so excited to see all of you and, and, and really amazing work that you have you have all done this last semester. And of course, finally, group six, Le Daisies. Where are you, Le Daisies? There you are, Haida, there you go. Look at that, so amazing. So amazing to see everybody. Awesome. So lots of love once again, and please do this with me. Let's all share the heart emoji and let's have all of us have that on our screens 
That's absolutely amazing. Look at how beautiful that is. So much love. So much love. There are about 59 people on this call. So if this isn't the epitome of love, I don't know what is. So that's absolutely amazing. So congratulations again. And please do remember to claim your certificate. So we come to the end of the program. But before, before we wrap up and before I hand you over to Nadine to do the final closing, I just want to say a special thank you to the co-moderators for this season. So Leonida, Anna, and Nadine. It's been absolutely amazing working shoulder to shoulder with you side by side. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate knowing that the three of you would have my back if the network just decided that it was just going to be off on that day. So that was such a pleasure uh, knowing that. Always a special shout out. And I'm glad that Linda, they called you out for this for sharing the research on web, but most importantly, keeping the pulse of the Women Empowerment Program going. Absolutely, Linda is a pleasure to work with and she's so inspiring. And please, let's show Linda some love. Let's show Linda some love. Yay, absolutely. And of course, we are able to hear each other week in, week out. And this is because of the amazing interpretation team that we have. And please, if we could just spotlight these amazing ladies, I doubt we'd be able to hear each other without them. And this is Alexandra, Marie, Leela, and Sarah. They are so dedicated to this program. And we always love to see see them we look forward to hearing from them uh when we do our uh you know voice checks mic checks sound all of that and it's such an amazing pleasure to work with them they are so dedicated to this program and really we are indebted to them or um you know you know from now and going forward so lots of love to all of you ladies we appreciate you to donna so we see slides come up, we see them come down, we see videos come up, we see them come down. That is basically the work of our very own Donna. We wouldn't be here without Donna and his dedication to the program is amazing. Donna can be jetting in and jetting out literally of different countries and still be able to run the Women Empowerment Program uh, as our tech uh, you know, guru from behind the scenes. And so we're so grateful to you, Donna. Thank you so, so much. I know you can hear me. I know you can hear me. So lots of love, Donna, from us to you. And finally, to Bernard, as well as the rest of the team that are there. Thank you so, so much for all you do in supporting women, particularly women on this program, and also you know, aiding in the delivery and the success of the Women Empowerment Program. So I'm so, so happy to have been given the opportunity to work with all of you. It's been inspiring, motivating, but importantly for me, it's been one hell of a ride. And I've enjoyed all the motivation, all the learning, everything that have been able to soak up like a sponge from the Women Empowerment Program. So lots of love from me to all of you. And over to you, Nadine, for our final closing. So just inviting you all to put your cameras back on as we uh, say goodbye to each other for the end of this semester. And before we do that, just, you know, in the in the spirit of gratitude, I just want to say um, invite all of you to join me in our gratitude to Vicky. Um, so, you know, welcome to put your hand on your heart um, and just to really experience the gratitude for her leadership and for her passion and for her all of the bubbly enthusiasm and skills that she brings to this program we're so so grateful and it is such a pleasure to see you grow 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 and fly 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 so lots of love from all of us to you vicky tick, tick, tick. and and all all for you to do is just say thank you and just receive <laughs> <laughs> as I have learned, as I've Yay. learned, thank you so much. <laughs> so don't forget to join the alumni WhatsApp group. Stay informed. You keep connected to us. Give us more ideas. Fill in the get your certificate. Fill in the survey. Get your fifty euro data bundle. Um, and stay in touch. And let's dance our way out.